just like to thank the Noongar people for inviting East Coast. Um, we're from the Bungalung Nation, we're Bible people. We have a high, high focus on the incarceration of young people um, and kids in care, our children that get left behind in, in incarceration. In New South Wales, there is a new bail act and it allows these guys, this government to hold our children with no criminal offence for any time, for as long as they like. And they need to be stopped. It's a very hard fight. Once they ha you have your child in custody, they are in the Queen's hands. They are children of the Queen. They are not children of the Queen. They are our children. That's right. And this is a fight that we have to fight, and they're calling it racking and stacking. Yeah. They may as well go and get a cattle truck and start rounding our teenagers up. Yeah. That's yeah. basically the same way as this bail act, but it allows them to do it. And this, this, is, this is our next generation of young warriors and young mothers that are getting traumatised. They're traumatised every day in that system and they're treated worse than animals in the dog pound. They are let out 30 minutes a day. They are in shackles. Shame doing that to our children. They are walking in the yard with shackles. They are let out in 30 minutes a day. The animals in Taronga Zoo get out longer than yeah. our children. Yeah. That is shame! Yeah. And we need to work in solidarity and go to these prisons and get these children out. They are left behind. We have too much death in custody. My brother died 11 years ago to them dirty scum sucking dogs. And nothing has changed. And that's insulting a dog because a dog wouldn't do that. Stop the genocide. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Fabian Yarra. Um, I'm a Noongar person here. Um, also, I uh, just wanted to talk about my experiences. Um, this year in March, um, I had my kid on the weekend and something was going on with his mother um, over where she was living. However, the kid got injured, the kid went to hospital. Um, not my one. Um, his brother went to hospital, and, and then on um, Tuesday, the DCP ordered me to actually to actually go in and, and surrender my son. Um, uh, I said to him, "Well, can you tell me what happened? You know what I mean? Is the actual um, his brother got injured in care?" Um, I've been trying to look for answers about the investigation process. They haven't told me anything about the investigation process, what happened in March, um, and I still don't know. Um, it, it took them. Um, also, I, I have... Also, I have a work with children card. Right? I have their own work with children card. They assessed me to look after kids in care, okay? So I can look at the kids. Well, they took my kid without any justification. Um, and I, I said to what I said to him, what's the justification? Oh because his brother got injured. He's he's, he's on the suspicious that he could be injured as well. I said, ain't he? Okay, well show, show me the proof show me the investigation. Um, making it own or making it up. Well they, they couldn't prove to me and, and they said to me, well if you because I, I had to make complaints. I made complaints to the actual uh, minister for um, Shadow Minister for DCP made a um, report to Minister for DCP uh, and also to Ben White. Um, also, I sent it to the odds. I've sent all the legal, um, I sent all the channels. Um, and, and, and I eventually got my son back after two weeks of doing what I did, you know, and um, put a lot of um, tremendous um, hurt and, 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 and anguish because I had to go in and, and I had to surrender my kid up or that was going to put me under kidnapping. Hey. 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 Some of the hey. Department of Child Protection said, you don't give your kid up, you're going to put your kidnapping, and the police is going to take it. Didn't have an option. So, so I, I had to train my son. But, I, um, but luckily he went to some Noongar people and said, hey, if you're going to take my son, make sure you place with Noongar people. You know? Um, also my family members, and it took them a long time to actually try to, I'll, I'll, I'll try to get them uh, placed with my family, and like, that actual process went for a uh, long time. And, uh, 
going here forth and everything. And um, two weeks was a long two weeks. Um, what happened? And then, um, and then after had a it took him two weeks to have a SRS meeting to have these all these kinds of meetings and all this other stuff. So um, took him. Um, yeah, it took him a long time to do that. So I, I thought the actual process was quite interesting because I. I I've never been involved with DCP in my entire life. My family was never taken away. Any, um, well, my pop wasn't taken away. My mother wasn't taken away. I wasn't taken away. I come from Family 11, where we never got involved with DCP in our entire lives. Okay? The reason why I got involved with DCP is because his mother was involved with DCP. I was never involved with DCP in my entire life. Now, of my, well, now his brothers, he's got um, six, uh, four brothers and, and two sisters. Two sisters are non Aboriginal, and he, uh, two brothers, no, three brothers are Aboriginal, and um, one brother is non Aboriginal. So he's got six of his family in, in, in care. So every week I have to march my son to Department of Child Protection in Canton. Every week. Every week. And then I see people coming in and coming out, and it's like, you know, like, um, I have to do that until my son's 18. Because I, I, I come from a family where everyone, um, my, my son needs to know his brothers and sisters. That's why I do that, you know what I mean? I, like, they could be, they could have done it where we could have met at another neutral place, have a decent piece of place, and um, they do the venue, and I just have to work with them to actually, so I can um, see my kid. My kid is under, like, a protection order, which, um, which, which was based on his mother, and hopefully I'll get that off. And to actually, um, to actually get the Aboriginal Legal Service and uh, and some other people to actually help you. When you want people to help you, when you get your kids mm -hmm. taken away, not mm -hmm. Alice, rang me after my serious complaints with uh, Dennis Engelson after two weeks, and when I got my kid back, I was willing to help you then. But when when my kid was taken away, it was not um, Alice could help you. No one could, could help you. No, these lawyers couldn't help you at all. These agencies couldn't help you. Um, Aboriginal, Aboriginal organisations and anything, so it's a lonely road when your kids get taken away, you've got no one to turn to, you get no support, you get no help, you get no thing at, at all, you're just there by yourself. And lucky if I've had the um, seemingly, seemingly educated, lucky I had my devices where I had to go talk to my auntie, my, my, my elders, Auntie Avril Williams, she actually helped me, also I spoke to DCP here, they actually helped me, so my situation was better. You know, but, and, and um, yeah, so, so it's, it's been a good outcome for me. My kid was in there for two weeks. Uh, I feel sorry for other people who haven't had their kids in uh, for, for a lot longer than, me, than than myself. And also I feel sorry for my um, my elder, Kerry Mead. She's got her grandchildren taken away. They all actually um, assaulted in care. Um, they got paid. Actually in care by Senecare. Catholic organisation that these kids got um, assaulted in care by uh, this kid six years old, he got assaulted in care by a ten year old in Senecare's um, organisation. So, uh, and she still can't get a kid. Due to the fact is that it's not her. They're looking at it, they're looking at other people, um, and also the like, Department of uh, Police and uh, other departments, uh, they share information, what's going on. So she was based on sharing information and what's going on um, with people coming to the house and other things, it wasn't her. So, um, and she, she wanted me to talk to you about, um, about the uh, freedom of information, like where where, um, where they get information from one person and they give uh, they give it to another agency and um, and uh, they just share information about uh, the person and how they was taken away and how they trying to get uh, build evidence and um, build evidence and everything like that. So um, we'll hopefully under Kerry's um, be fighting that. Hopefully she get a grand grandchildren back and hope to get the um, let another people. Know their personal information. And, and also they're letting other agencies and other people to, to know her personal information. So we have to fight that and fight the injustices of, of happening. But with myself, um, now going to DCP, I've been doing it for a while now, a couple, for about two months now. It's just a norm to go drop my kid off and pick it up. Like, I feel sorry for the mothers, eh? I really do, eh? Because, like, um, I was through with the mothers, and every time I go to DCP, they're, they're always there crying. He's happy to see a kid for two hours, two hours a week. And then when I go, uh, gee, it breaks your heart when the mother's there and she has to leave a kid, you know what I mean? I, I take the kid. 
and then then she like see her eyes and roll back and I understand where she's coming because I can see through her eyes that she's so hurt and she got all of her six kids in care. You know what I mean? Like, um, and, she, and she's not Aboriginal. She's not an Aboriginal person. You know what I mean? She's a Wajla, you know? So she's got her kids in care. So I feel sorry for her, uh, and like, in, in a sense, and hopefully they can um, try to work with her. And since I've known her, they haven't, like, um, well, they say they have been working with her, but I, don't, I haven't seen the help. She's got some issues, um, some mental issues or something, or, and she she needs to get that addressed and other stuff. And like, um, I haven't seen um, these agencies or, uh, these agencies they actually help her, so I'm trying to get to get some help. But uh, I, I do understand because I come from both sides, like drop the kid off and actually see the parents. Because I go there every week and I see them walking in and walking out. And I, I say, gee, man, after I go there, I think I think I need some counselling now because this is traumatic. I'm seeing it every week, you know what I mean? I'm like, um, gee, it's like going to the police. So we're going to the police um, office. Thank you for that.